Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White, and today we're going to continue our discussion of entropy and heat engines. We're going to talk about the statements of the second law of thermodynamics, and we're going to talk about the relationships between heat, work, and entropy. And then we're going to introduce something called the Carnot engine, which is a mostly hypothetical uh, type of engine that converts heat into work and vice versa, depending on which way you run it. And then we'll, talk, we'll look at the thermodynamic efficiency of Carnot engines compared with other engines. The second law of thermodynamics has been stated many different ways, but William Thompson, who was later known as Lord Kelvin, said, One cannot convert a quantity of heat completely into work without wasting some of this heat at a lower temperature. Rudolf Clausius said, One cannot transfer heat from a cold object to a hot object without using work to make the transfer. And we know this is obviously true because air conditioners do exactly that. They transfer heat from a cold object to a hot object, and uh, they need work input to make that transfer work. So the first law of thermodynamics we are well familiar with now says that delta U is equal to Q plus W, and if we restrict ourselves to uh, pressure volume work, uh, that would be Q minus P delta V. And we have already seen in previous lessons that in an isothermal expansion where the change in temperature is equal to zero, the heat the input that's needed during an expansion uh, in order to maintain a constant temperature is nRT times the logarithm of V2 over V1. And the delta S for the system is equal to Q divided by T. In an adiabatic expansion, Q is equal to zero, and so delta S uh, is equal to zero. And uh, T2 is related to T1 by V1 over V2 to the gamma minus 1, where gamma is the ratio of heat capacities at constant pressure and constant volume. Now a Carnot engine uh, simply works on a closed cycle of expansion and contraction that always returns the engine to its same initial state after four different uh, cycles. The first section is an isothermal expansion from point A to point B on this diagram. And um, following that we uh, do an adiabatic expansion from point B to point C. Now the work that's done uh, by the system on the surroundings is equal to the area underneath these curves. Uh, since this is a PV diagram and uh, the work is uh, e the work differential work dW is equal uh, to PdV, we can integrate that uh, to get the area underneath the curves. The third section of the Carnot engine cycle is an isothermal compression from point uh, C to point D. And the final um, s s stage in the Carnot engine cycle is an adiabatic compression from point D to point A. And uh, again, the work that's done by the surroundings on the system is equal to the area underneath this curve. And that means that over the entire cycle, the area inside the curves is equal to the net amount of work done by the engine um, on the surroundings in the cycle. So for this particular illustration, I've used 4.81 moles of uh, an, uh, a monatomic uh, ideal gas, like helium, and I've used a high temperature reservoir for the isothermal expansion uh, of 500 kelvins and a low temperature reservoir for the isothermal compression of 300 kelvins. Now the efficiency of a heat engine is defined as the net amount of work done by the engine on the surroundings divided by the amount of heat drawn from the high temperature reservoir. So usually in engines we're burning fuel to, to generate heat and uh, turn that into useful work by making an engine go uh, somewhere or power something. And uh, we always end up throwing away some uh, heat into a low temperature reservoir, but that's just waste heat and so we count the efficiency is the work that we get out of the engine divided by the heat that we needed to put into the engine. Uh, we can express that the work as the difference between the um, heat from the high temperature reservoir minus the heat from the low temperature reservoir in the case of a Carnot engine. That's just done by energy conservation. And we can use the definition of entropy to uh, show that the, the, the uh, 
uh, heats are proportional to the temperatures. And so we can now rewrite the efficiency of the engine just in terms of the temperatures of the high temperature reservoir and the low temperature reservoir. For the example that we used on the previous slide, uh, the uh, high temperature reservoir was at 500 kelvins and the low temperature reservoir was at 300 kelvins. And so the efficiency of this engine, the amount of work that we get out of it divided by the heat that we put into it is 40%. Now heat engines are all around us and the Carnot engine uh, is the most efficient way of converting heat into work. It's limited only by the second law of thermodynamics. In fact, if you run the Carnot engine uh, backwards from the way that I uh, illustrated it, then the value of work it has the opposite sign and now you're using the surroundings to do work network on the system, but it also transfers heat from the low temperature reservoir to the high temperature reservoir, sort of like an air conditioner. Um, so a Carnot engine is the most efficient way to interconvert heat and work in either direction. But the requirement of reversibility all makes, also makes this uh, quite impractical as a real device. Reversibility means that you have to do each uh, individual section of the cycles, each expansion and contraction, very slowly so that you maintain uh, equilibrium throughout the process. And uh, what that means is you can't get any real power out of a Carnot engine. There are other less efficient heat engines that include refrigerators, internal combustion engines, air conditioners, and heat pumps, and so forth. Um, they're not nearly as efficient as a Carnot engine, but they're able to develop power to develop uh, and to interconvert lots of heat and work in either direction. So next time we will talk about the equilibrium of phase transitions like melting and vaporization.